Hi, I'm James McGuire, Managing Editor of Datamation, and today we're talking about data governance, one of the more challenging topics in enterprise IT. To discuss that, we're joined by Susan Wilson, Vice President of Data Governance at Informatica. Susan, hello to you today. Hi, James. Thanks for having me on the show today. And uh, congratulations. First of all, you, you have made it to Friday. That's, that's really good news. I, I want to congratulate you on that. Yes. Oh, so excited to be here uh, as well. <laughs> and, and also, you actually know just a, a ton about data governance, which is an exceptionally complicated topic. I, so I have to you know, g give you a kudos for that. I mean, I think data governance is a topic that many people find exceptionally confusing. It is. It is one that um, oftentimes I think that we're having to really help customers understand what the value and opportunity is. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think, uh, yeah, Informatica is, is a company that is widely known, but let's let's make sure that everyone knows. Let's let's do a little introduction. What exactly is Informatica? What what is the software? What is the services that it provides? Oh, very good. Well, you know, before I go into that, I'd also like to Please. just highlight, um, you know, I'm the vice president of the data governance and privacy segment with Informatica. I've been with Informatica for eight, nine, nearly nine years. Wow. Um, okay. Prior to joining Informatica, I worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals, um, okay. growing a data management team from a four person team into an enterprise shared services. And now I lead a team of experts around the world on data governance and privacy that help our customers get business value from data. And um, one of the important reasons why I joined Informatica, Informatica has been a leader in enterprise cloud data management for over 25 years. Mm. We have been the trusted partner to more than 9,500 companies across the globe, mm. looking to organize, manage, and analyze and derive actionable business insights from their data, whether mm. it's on the cloud or on the server side. And companies choose Informatica, like I did when I was a customer, to help them with their data governance because our platform is designed to deliver immediate business value based on current requirements, but can also be adapted as their data governance requirements change. Um, the other thing is that we're the market leader in all five categories of enterprise data management, helping customers <laughs> seamlessly move to the cloud and embrace a cloud first cloud native approach to their digital transformation efforts. The last thing that I'll also highlight is that 85 of the fortune 100 companies use Informatica and we are the only vendor neutral cloud data company that partners with all the hyperscalers, AWS, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud, and in 2020, we were recognized as the partner of the year for both Microsoft as well as Snowflake. Wow. Okay. Those are those are two very different companies. Microsoft, sort of the the classic, you know, company has been around for decades. Is no Snowflake, sort of the new darling in the block. So, kind of an interesting mix of companies there. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, to, to take a look at, at at where companies are in data governance. Because I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, companies are are struggling with the idea, and some of them don't want to do it, or they, they maybe some of them are think they are doing it, and maybe they're not doing it as well as perhaps they need to. And where, where do you think companies are generally with the idea of data governance, and, and what do you see as some of the big pain points with, with data governance? That's um, a, a really good question because let's take a walk down history lane for just a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say in years past, you know, 2017, 2018, we'll go right. back that far. Right. Largely, data governance was about regulations. It was mm. about more of the risk-based approach to, um, to, to data. Mm. Fast forward now to 2020, we started to see this in 2019 and 2020, and then certainly in 2021, it is really about helping customers to see the value of data. And in fact, many of these organizations that are looking at self-service analytics say we need data governance in order to effectively deliver that. Hmm. The challenge is with the sheer volume of data that companies are generating today, the whole concept of delivering transparency and trust with a balance of right data ethics, data governance and privacy is now also become even more critical. Hmm. And in fact, data privacy laws like California Consumer Privacy Act, which I'm in the state of California. Right, I am too. And general data protection rule, um, have uh, definitely kept a lot of our customers awake at night. Um, mm -hmm. And so we've helped them with their data governance framework that enables them to define and document standards, the norms and the accountability and ownership that's needed. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is during the pandemic, 
the need for getting trusted data to the lines of business spiked as these companies looked right. for insights in their data, right? Leveraging self-service analytics to do that mm-hmm. in order um, to offer differentiated services. You know, um, how can I help my customer better understand our offerings, right? And then also looking at finding operational efficiencies um, and meanwhile, protecting their customers and employees. So data became core, governance became a vehicle. And so we help many of our customers deliver a foundation of trusted data through governance and privacy. And now we're able to expand them to more lines of business. Do, do you sense the companies feel like they're really struggling with data governance? Do you think generally it's, it's under control? They just would like to do even better than they are. No, it's not under control. And what they're finding is that they've got these goals, right, to make data more accessible, but in a trusted way. And so the ability to know the data they have and to have the appropriate quality are things that are very much top of mind for them. Mm -hmm. And so they're seeking our help, not only in our technology, but also the best practices. Hmm. Well, let's, let's sort of get down to the trenches and see a kind of a, a real world example. I mean, yeah. what would you point to in terms of a, a customer use case? What, what do you see out in the field? Yeah, I've got a couple of them. Um, with New York Life, one of our America's largest mutual life insurance companies providing insurance, investment, and retirement solutions. Mm-hmm. They've been around for over 100 years. Um, they needed a full investment from its business leaders to really transition from legacy systems, storing and processing data to a more modern data platform. They really had a very large business transformation, digital transformation occurring. New York Life turned to Informatica for our enterprise data governance solution, um, utilizing a single place to capture the data and to define it in order to build out the new systems and data lakes. Mm -hmm. And basically the achievements is that the productivity and time savings have been transformative for their team by being able to automate data governance program um, using Informatica solutions. Mm -hmm. Um, They have defined nearly 2000 glossary terms across their lines of business, have scanned Uh more than 45 business applications and 250 data sets um, while also profiling about 5,000 attributes just to give you a size, the sense of the size, the scope, the scale, the enterprise reach. A lot of Um, data. Exactly, exactly. And, and really just working at it from all different personas and use cases, different lines of business. Um, that's what we're seeing. With Eli Lilly, a global healthcare leader uniting care with discovery to create medicine and overall improving lives around the world, um, they utilize the Informatica platform along with Amazon's web services, Salesforce and SAP to drive their cloud first and customer centric strategies um, with the goal of creating an enterprise data governance program to collect the silos of healthcare mm-hmm. knowledge right. and context that already exists in the business. The company is now able to deliver trusted data to the organization, enabling business decisions across 120 countries, which is something wow. that getting everybody involved on the same language is very important. So oh. um, two great stories that we're proud of. That's pretty amazing. You know, I, I'm interested to, to get your take on, on what are some key trends or key technologies that are shaping data governance. I mean, if you look at cloud computing, if you, it appears that, you know, multi-cloud and, and cloud native are, are big technologies that are really shifting the way cloud computing happens. What, what are some similar technologies or trends that are, that are really shaping data governance these days? Yeah, so we live now in the cloud AI era. What fuels the cloud AI economy is data, right? Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, businesses are still are increasingly becoming more and more data driven in how they run their supply chain, their marketing, their customer service, right? It's no more, you know, it can't be off of gut feel. I've got to use right. data help to make these decisions, right. especially with these new market conditions too, that we're all dealing with. Um, and they are also increasingly moving their data to the cloud, especially during this global pandemic. We saw massive transformations there. Yeah, it was accelerated, so, it seems like. Exactly, exactly. So new data types and sources are contributing to huge amounts of information that need to be assessed, Hmm. curated, um, cleansed, and protected so that anyone, whether it's business or IT, um, or any system can also use it. So the answer really is an intelligent data governance solution that can help you with that, the transparency, Mm -hmm. the quality, the protection, um, the data access. 
uh, one that is automated and can scale to handle the largest data lakes and is intelligent, not only in just name only. Right. What about, you, you've mentioned this a little bit, about the idea of artificial intelligence and, and machine learning, it, it seems like that's going to shape data governance. Correct me if I'm right or wrong. Is it is that mainstream yet or is that still ahead of the curve? It is. And AI machine learning is in our company's DNA. We were born with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with all of the metadata management um, that we've invested in over decades. And it's really at the core of everything we do at Informatica. And we doubled down on AI machine learning, especially over the last three years with continuous investment in our R&D efforts and launched mm -hmm. the industry's first metadata-driven AI engine called Claire. And in fact, the way that it's spelled, it's C-L-A-I. -E, right? <laughs> oh, I like it. Okay, nice. Right? Okay. Yeah, yep. it's, it's great. And, you know, look, she delivers the industry's um, leading metadata capabilities of our data platform to accelerate and automate some of those core data management um, and data quality and governance processes. For example, some of the most challenging data governance tasks are finding data. So right. the discovery capabilities that we've built into our AI machine learning techniques have helped our organization, our companies that we work with, find more data and, and be able to count on that um, for whether it's impact analysis or it's for insights and analytics. And also measuring quality and quality automation so that when I see this data, I can also see the data quality supply chain, which is critically important for any of us that are managing data and where do I need to improve it? Mm -hmm. And then also locating the right people to govern it. So having a governed marketplace and the automation built into that to help with not only connecting to the right subject matter experts, but also getting the data to the right individuals. Right. Well, what if a, a company came to you and said, hey, we're really struggling, you know, our data governance, we thought it was on track, it's not really on track, or maybe it's a little bit on track. And, you know, what would you say to them in terms of a, a few best practices that they really need to be aware of? What's, what, what's, what's important then? I have this conversation just about every single day. It's I bet. basically yeah. the clinic hours, right? With Susan. Sure. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, please help and, us, help. Yeah, please help us. How do we drive yeah. more adoption? How do I really um, make this sticky? You know, because there's a lot of data governance programs. They're at their fifth attempt right. and they're starting to lose credibility with their enterprise. And so I always say, always start with the business problem that you're solving for. Hmm. Always think about the experiences of the consumers, the people that, you, that need to benefit from solving this business problem. And that might be a business analyst. That might be a data scientist. It could be your executive team. Mm -hmm. And so having, I call it the WIFM, the what's in it for me in mind uh -huh. of that right. individual right. is critically important. So don't solve for, uh, don't, don't just say, I'm uh, going to implement the full a glossary of terms for finance. Okay, that's not that's not enough. What, what what's that going to do for you? What's the end in mind? When's done? Done, right? It's all about what's the business problem I'm solving for, and how do we make it? How do I make it sticky and build from there? Mm -hmm. You know, because listen, data is now recognized as one of, if not one of, the most important strategic assets an enterprise has to manage. And data is a powerful asset when it's governed, meaning I understand it. I have the context around it. It's quality. I can trust it. I can see right. it, shop for it. Mm -hmm. And that's critical for any data-driven transformation initiative. So I always say, look for the data initiatives in your organization that okay. you can have the biggest impact, but maybe it's a small amount of effort. So find quick wins, right? The quick wins. And those quick wins could be with self-service analytics. It could also be with a regulation. It could also be helping to uh, break down the data silos across maybe finance and your research organization. So it's looking for those data initiatives and, and really using that as an opportunity to start small, right? Think big, start small, scale fast and find those opportunities and use them and to grow your program over time. Hmm. All right, so you, you said that today. You will say that again Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? <laughs> I'm glad you got a chance meeting. to say that. Yes. I have a meeting in a couple hours with another customer. I'll be reviewing. Good. Good. No, they, they will need help. I mean, everyone does. They uh, do. Yep. So I know it's, it's interesting. You, you've been in the field a long time. You've, you've really seen how it's developed, um, which is really interesting. I think it's it's come in the last few years, it seems like it's come a long way. Um, what would you say if you look, say, even three to five years out, it's hard to predict technology that way or any tech trends. I mean, 
But what, what is data governance going to look like, say, three to five years from now? And, and how can a company prepare for it at a time? Mm, it's a great question. Uh, so, you know, of course, looking in my crystal ball, automation is going to be playing a bigger right. role in data governance and privacy in the years ahead and customers will get more and more value out of it. We're building a lot in here. We're, we're becoming a lot more aware of what a customer is doing, what the customer needs. And Informatica's unique position of having um, the capabilities, a broad set of capabilities, not only the cloud, we know things about your systems, we know what you're doing with the data. We have the data supply chain in mind. We also understand the business objectives. So we're putting in, um, in the R&D space more to get more out of the value of data for companies. So more is gonna be um, built into the focus on establishing a found, solid foundation now. Okay. And getting more people engaged with that trusted data. Governance programs will also support more projects in every corner of the organization because they'll be able to scale faster. There will be more automated. We'll be able to um, provide more insights into how they can connect because there will be a lot more intelligence about data from finance, data from operations. And the technology that supports these programs will also likewise scale, replacing more and more of the manual tasks um, with automation and machine learning. Mm -hmm. methodologies to help reduce that friction and enable customers to get more accurate and consistent answers out of their data. Hmm. Um, to get the data governance right, though, you know, they'll need to go live with their applications and services faster and, you know, empower more lines of business to do great things, you know, make faster, better decisions and unite their customer data. You know, in short, we really do believe that um, data that's properly governed, the sky is really going to be the limit for them. Hmm. If I had to summarize it one word, it says like automation among the there's several things there, but automation is like a, it's a particularly big one in, in your view in the years ahead. It's huge. Yeah. yeah I know that. Listen, I, I got a number of customers that will say to me, I am crushing under the scale of manual documentation of lineage. In fact, right. the moment that I document it, it's immediately obsolete. Of and course. the moment that I report bad quality data or misunderstanding of the lineage, I lose credibility. So mm -hmm. help me with the automation. Help me build credibility and trust. Help me to scale across more lines of business with more use cases. So it's critically important. And and I guess the, the last point in, in that automation, yes, but of course the automation has to be intelligent. It can't simply be <laughs> ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. And then maybe that's the real challenge. I'm not sure. Correct. Correct. Yeah. With the right, and that's why business context is so critical because it tells us a lot more about what's um, what, what would be helpful here, right? Um, in terms of automation. Hmm. Interesting, Susan. I think this could be a, a five-hour conversation, but you you have said the the gist of it. I, I very much appreciate you sharing your expertise. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, James. It's been great meeting you. I appreciate right. your time. Take care.